Mr. Blake? Yes, David Small. Oh, Rabbi Small, it's so nice to see you again. The Democratic County Dinner, remember? You gave the prayer for peace. <laughs> Did it do any good? <laughs> Not among the Democrats. You know Rabbi Small, Chief? Oh, yes. Another of your communicants? No, 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 no. But these are ecumenical times. Uh, am I interrupting? Well, no, I don't mind if the Chief doesn't. Uh, excuse me. Thanks, Bob. Oh, listen, uh, do you mind if we take this outside? because nobody at the Democratic Club remembers seeing me Thursday night uh, that I wasn't there. Now, haven't you ever done anything and people didn't even notice you were there? That's why I stopped giving sermons. Now, the Democrats, admittedly, they can't win a city election. But you think they'd be smart enough to remember who's in the room? <laughs> Particularly if he's there every Thursday night. Your wife doesn't go with you? She doesn't go out evenings. Uh, Vinny's confined to a wheelchair. I see. Mr. Blake, when did you get home? Oh, a little before 12. My wife will confirm that if you ask her. When you ask her. But, Chief, you never really told me what this is all about. Arlette Giroux. The girl who got killed. Myra Galen's maid. Oh, yeah. She was seen here with you. Oh, that makes me a suspect? Well, not necessarily. Well, why not? Why not me? Uh, one of the papers has a rabbi as the favorite. <laughs> you can have the honor. That girl was here on business. She didn't own a car. But Myra Galen does. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> she bought it from me. Mrs. Galen works, so she sent the maid in for the 6,000-mile check with a list. I can remember a stiff door handle, an ashtray that wouldn't open, and a noise in the transmission that sounded like a birdie. I probably have the list in the office. Oh, forget it. That's the only time you ever saw the girl. Yes. Uh, you're not planning a trip. Well, Mr. Blake, showroom, please. Well, only to the showroom for now, then home. You need me for anything else? Oh, that's all for now. Rabbi, make yourself at home. Does it bother you that it's Thursday nights that Blake can't account for? Doesn't it you? The man had a look of love on his face when he talked about his wife. His invalid wife. Rabbi. Watch closely, because I'm only going to do this once. Now, see that? The time man already found the leak and marked it. This proves only one thing. There's absolutely no point in two people doing the same job. Do I make myself clear, Rabbi? Yes, Chief. Rabbi, when you finish this... Oh, no, we're all finished. It's all yours, Mr. Becker. Good day, gentlemen. Run again. Uh, uh, Rabbi, the, uh, does the chief suspect Jimmy Blake of, uh, you know, the girl shooting? No, no. The girl was killed on Thursday night. And Jimmy, now, I don't know where he goes, but I know the man and he's no killer, and you've got to make the chief understand that. Do I, Mr. Beck? <laughs> Would you do me a favor? Of course, darling. I know it's my turn to stack the dishes, but would you do it for me? I'm expecting company. Oh, would you invite? I'd invite anybody. You just said... Not only invited... didn't I invite anybody, I kind of told a rabbi to mind his own business. Oh, well, I hope you did it in a nice way. I did it in a way that should last about six hours. Five and a half. Ah. What a wonderful surprise for my dad. Kate, you remember the rabbi? Hello, rabbi. I met you at the interfaith breakfast. Do you remember? Yes, certainly. I'm sorry I didn't call first. All right. Well, if you will excuse me. Chief, about Jimmy Blake. Yeah, about Jimmy Blake. You going to tell me why you went to see him? Do I get another lecture on meddling? Do I get the truth? Absolutely. I think we both went to see him for the same reason. I see. Meaning you visited the Galen house and took a quick peek into Arlette's room. 
As a spiritual advisor, of course. No, not as a spiritual advisor. It was more like a curious citizen. And not a quick peek, either. It was a careful look. And you found a man's pipe? Yeah, inside the girl's middle drawer. Left-hand side, it was under a knit sweater, and the case was embossed J. Blake. Why didn't you mention it? But to Blake? Well, you didn't mention it to him, and I thought, if that's a trap, I don't want to move the bait. You think he might try to get it back? I don't think he knows it's there. I'm sure you have some solid explanation for that remark. I think I need some coffee before I hear it. You care for some? No, thank you. Did you notice the nice suit the rabbi had on? And I'm sure he's a very busy man. I wonder how his wife got him to go shopping. She probably nags him. Nice meeting you. <laughs> rabbi, if Blake doesn't know where his pipe is, how'd he get there? I mean, when I see a pipe in a girl's room, you think, I think uh huh? And you think, well, I don't see a man and a girl. I see Blake and Arlette, and they don't add up to aha for me. So I look for another explanation. They taught you that at the seminary? Well, they taught me to question, to doubt. We have an old saying that to make an assumption is to fool yourself. They must graduate some great detectives. <laughs> some pretty good rabbis. My grandfather, for one. What is the other explanation? I mean... Suppose it isn't aha uh -huh, with Blake and the dead girl. How did the pipe get into her room? Well, I didn't say I had another explanation. I said I was looking for one. Well, don't look too hard. Now, I don't buy you as a suspect, but if you keep knocking people out of the box, uh, somebody... somebody's got to be the big mocker. Big what? The big enchilada. Yeah, something like that. You sure you don't want any coffee? No, no, I only have it after dinner. Why didn't I have dinner? Why am I wearing my best suit? Well, when I see a rabbi who hasn't eaten dinner by nine and who's wearing his best suit, I suspect he's late for an event. An event? What event? It's a little late for a funeral. I'd say a wedding. A wedding? Uh, the Davidson wedding. I'm late for a wedding. Well, if more rabbis and priests were late, there'd be fewer divorces. <laughs> Thank you for a nice evening, Chief. Thank you, Rabbi. Yeah, he's gone. I was just going to bring in dessert. You have a choice of three. You can have uh, low-fat yogurt, half a grapefruit, or dietetic peaches. I would recommend the dietetic peaches. Trying to tell me something, Kate? <laughs> take down those pictures in the basement. Uh, I haven't looked today. But if no one looks, it's the same as if he took them down. He's a good custodian. Yeah, me, I don't care. It's fine, but he complains twice a week. <laughs> hey, hey. The artwork in that fine living room makes Stanley's collection look like this. But that's not why you're here. No, David. I thought you'd have called me by now. The board met last night. Oh, my contract's still up in the air. Who told you? Nobody. Oh, if they'd renewed my contract, you would have called me last night. If they'd fired me, you would have seen me very early this morning. So what they did is they postponed it. And they tabled it for a week. Baker's crowd had the votes. And we asked them, can you let a rabbi go if he's a suspect in a murder case? What, if I'm cleared, I get fired? Well, something like that. If Baker can keep his people coming to meetings. That's what if I confess, do I get a life contract? Oh, Dave, I did you.